Infantry fighting vehicles for Australia. Will the Army still get them? Which is the best option? Australia is finally to replace the venerable M113 APC with an infantry fighting vehicle, IFV, under Project Land 400 Phase 3, part of the broader Land 400 program that includes the replacement for existing ASLAB reconnaissance vehicles. Under Land 400 Phase 3, the Army was seeking up to 450 IFVs, now reduced to a minimum of 300, which was to cover three mechanised infantry battalions, one in each of the 1st, 3rd and 7th Brigades, in addition to vehicles required for training, maintenance rotation and attrition reserve. It should be noted that the introduction of a modern IFV will lead to a doctrinal change for the Army, as the IFV can be used in ways that the M113 APC cannot. Yet there are Australian commentators who question the worthiness of this project. Of course, the new IFV project doesn't exist in isolation and represents the final stage in the hardening of the Army's mobility. Under Land 8116, the Army will require 30 AS9 Huntsman self-propelled guns and 15 AS10 armoured ammunition resupply vehicles. This is a new capability for the Australian Army. While not a new capability, the replacement for the ASLAB reconnaissance vehicles with the Boxer under Land 400 Phase 2 represents a major upgrade in capability, and one that we should expect given the introduction of the state-of-the-art weapon system. Australia has also invested in upgrading its tank force. 59 M1A1 Abrams were acquired by the Army in 2007 to replace the Leopard 1s. These tanks were Australianised, with a mix of US Army and US Marine Corps fittings, but without depleted uranium armour. Starting in 2024, these are to be replaced by 75 M1A2 SEPV-3 tanks. It is important to note the 1980s, the Australian Leopards were not considered viable for overseas deployment due to its level of protection, earning one armoured regiment the moniker of koalas, not to be exported or shot at. This is the situation Australia finds itself in with regard to the mechanised infantry battalions when moving in the M113s. With the existing projects at fruition, the future Australian Army armoured vehicle fleet would include 75 M1A2 main battle tanks, 30 AS9 self-propelled guns, 211 Boxer combat reconnaissance vehicles, 1,052 Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicles, PMVs, and 1,100 Hawkeye Light PMVs. And in terms of armoured support vehicles, AS-10 Ammunition Resupply Vehicles, M-88 Armoured Recovery Vehicles, M-1074 Joint Assault Bridges, and another new capability in 29 M-1150 Assault Breacher Vehicles. These projects, together with those already completed, represent a deliberate program to harden the Army. Why wouldn't this continue for arguably the most critical element, an infantry fighting vehicle for the infantry? Some question the utility of a heavy IFV operating in Southeast Asia. But heavier vehicles are already in service there, so the terrain is not an issue. And who is to say the Australian Army won't deploy again to the Middle East or Korea? Additionally, in some scenarios, a heavily protected IFV may be more appropriate vehicle than a main battle tank. The M113 AS4 replacement is now down to two contenders. Rheinmetall Defence Australia's Lynx KF41, with a maximum weight of up to 50 tonnes and powered by an 850 kilowatt engine, armed with a 30mm cannon, coaxial 7.62mm machine gun, spike anti-tank guided missiles and a remote weapon station and the Hanwha Defence Australia's AS21 Redback. With a maximum weight of 42 tonnes, the Redback is powered by a 735 kilowatt engine armed with a 30 mm cannon, coaxial 7.62 mm machine gun, spike anti-tank guided missile, and a remote weapon station. Both vehicles are heavy when compared to most modern infantry fighting vehicles and weigh around as much as the Leopard 1 was in Australian service which at that time was considered to have su sufficient mobility for use in Southeast Asia. And both contenders have essentially the same power to weight ratio. Both offer the same levels, of protect uh, levels and options in terms of firepower, including anti-tank guided missiles, 
an all carrier crew of three and eight dismounts. Both will have an active protection system and Stanag 4569 level six protection, so covering 30 millimeter APFS DS at 500 meters across the frontal arc and 155 millimeter high explosive berths at 10 meters. Might the KF-41's greater weight allowance offer more in terms of future developments? Might the fact that the Redback uses the same engine as the AS-9 self-propelled gun and or that it uses rubber tracks influence the decision? In summary, the Australian Army is not just maintaining armoured vehicle capabilities, it is significantly enhancing them and introducing new ones. With this already substantial commitment to hardening its land force, it would be incongruent not to continue with Land 400 Phase 3, and indeed to acquire the full initial total of 450 vehicles. As to which of the contenders should be selected, the decision may well come down to politics, both domestic in terms of electorates where the vehicles will be built, and bilateral relations with Germany and South Korea. Failure to acquire a state-of-the-art infantry fighting vehicle will likely mean the Army's mechanised infantry battalions would not be sent overseas with their vehicles to a conflict zone. They simply wouldn't be protected. If either of the KF-41 or AS-21 is selected, Australia will join the top rung of IFV operators. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Serre.